Breaking news just in, Hong Kong has officially approved both a Bitcoin and an Ethereum spot ETF, which is very, very significant for the Asia market, which we'll be waking up a little bit later on. And we'll see if that creates a major pump within crypto. This is following quite a rocky weekend, which was, of course, uh, with the geopolitical tensions rising, a lot of the crypto is coming down heavily. Uh, Bitcoin coming down about 8%, but some of the altcoins between 20 to 50% downside. So the question is, has the dump been completed? Is it over? Are we going to be returning to up only or is there going to be a possibility of a rejection? In today's show, we'll have a look at the high time frame trend and establish is that trend still intact? We'll also have a look at the low time frames and I'll show you where the upside areas of resistance are, which bulls must clear in order to uh, regain those low time frame trends towards the upside. So without further ado, let's get straight into the show. Make sure that you smash the like button hit the bell notification and definitely be subscribed to the channel if you're not already subscribed we are one of the uh, quickest growing channels within the world um, so let's continue now what's happening over here in terms of the uh, the order book especially the spot order book remember the spot market drives the overall trend of the bull run and if you look over here at Cole he says the spot order book depth aggregate of all different exchanges is at historically bullish levels and it remains long and strong right every time the order book seems to come back into this low region think of that as a range low region then price tends to bounce and the spot bid returns back for bitcoin which is something that we've seen i'll show you as well what's happened with the funding rates uh, which has been very very significant something of major significance has occurred uh, which is a strong screaming signal that i have to take every time i see it so we'll identify that as well in today's show and if you look at this tweet crypto is holding up pretty well considering uh, uh, the weekend right and the last week we had the sec suing uniswap which tends to threaten the whole DeFi crypto space uh, where ultimately your ip addresses could be compromised and the sec could gain access to uh, pretty much all of your trades right though or the trade history at least we have world war three fears with, uh, of course, Iran and Israel. We have uh, inflation being bad. The Fed can't really cut rates. If anything, they're now starting to price in the possibility of the Fed, the Fed increasing the interest rates, which is something that people never thought they would see at this point of the bull run. Um, and then we also had Solana congested because of cats, rats, dogs, frogs, and all sorts of different meme coins. So that's the question, what happens next, right? Well, this tweet was made yesterday. Do we go high on Nuke? Uh, given the recent information around, of course, Hong Kong approving the Bitcoin and ETH ETF, um, that's pretty significant, right? So it looks like up and for the whale room community, of course, I addressed all of this over the course of the weekend on Discord. And I told you that, look, I'm opening up longs. So there it is. One of the longs that I opened up, of course, is Rune, a pretty sizable trade. We're up almost $14,000 right now on that trade, 20%. Uh, so I'm going to continue to hold that. I'll manage this trade accordingly, and I'll probably even scale it up. You might notice that a lot of the other trades are gone um, just before everything came out regarding uh, these uh, these news events as they started to break over the course of the weekend. I closed the other trades, um, looking to rather consolidate into just one easy to manage trade as opposed to getting chopped in and out. Why getting chopped in and out? Well, that's got a lot to do with the halving cycle, right? With only four days and 14 hours to go, we know that the next four to six weeks is designed to chop and shake you out of your position. So I'll show you where the levels are. I'll show you how you can remain safe within your trades. And really at the end of the day, you want to limit the amount of high leverage positions that you have open and really focus on those spot trades. So a lot to look at in today's show. Looking at the banter bubbles charts over here, well, uh, or at least the, the bubbles you can see, most of them are starting to bounce on the hourly, on the daily, pretty much all of them um, have started to retrace about 50% of their moves. And that 50% level back to uh, the upside is gonna be very, very significant to overcome. That is the level that you wanna see taken. I got also my airdrop counter, which is constantly running on the top over there. Uh, for those of you who were airdrop farming for the, the gummy airdrop over the weekend, congratulations, you would have got double points, right? Double the airdrop points for those who are mining or farming over the course of the weekend. So 
Uh, let's continue. Let's continue on over here um, and look at the Bitcoin halving cycles and the history of what happens following that halving cycle. Just a very quick, simple overview over here. You can see that the first halving cycle occurred on the 28th of November 2012. And for a reminder, for those that are new out here, the halving cycle doesn't mean that Bitcoin's price cuts in half, although sometimes it seems like that's the case because we often sell off into the halving event. But what it means is ultimately uh, that the reward that the miners get, the Bitcoin reward gets divide in, uh, divided into two. So we're currently at about 6.25 Bitcoin. That will go down to 3.125 Bitcoin uh, following the halving cycle, which is coming up again in exactly four days and 16 hours. So what happens in the in the following months over there? 365 days after the halving, the first halving, Bitcoin rose 8,069%. Uh, the second time that occurred, which was in 2016, Bitcoin rose uh, 284% and then proceeded to, uh, it pulled back slightly and went on for another rally. And then if you look at the next one in 2020, which was of course just following uh, the pandemic, uh, we had a 538% rise or increase in Bitcoin. So that's usually where Bitcoin only puts in minor gains, but the altcoins really tend to rally pretty aggressively. So we're also looking at the ETF flows we're waiting for today uh, to come out. But so far, um, the last one that we had was slightly negative. If we get a positive day uh, and you have now Asia as well, that's, that ETF narrative will continue to drive the crypto markets. Here is your prior halving cycle. So I've circled the areas just to kind of give you some sort of an indication of what you can expect. You can see the first one looking at it um, as per the candlesticks, uh, pretty much it's mostly chop and sideways. And then a couple of months later is straight onwards and upwards. Here's your second one. This one, of course, we dumped into that and then rallied a couple of months later. The point being over here is that this is a reaccumulation zone. It's an opportunity for you to set your long-term positions for the rest of the cycle. This one is a little bit different in the sense that it's the first time ever that we already broke those all-time highs, but yet here we are coming into the halving cycle. If you do see something like this, uh, do not get shaken out of your positions. Uh, this will most likely, six months from now, have looked like an amazing buying opportunity, no matter how low we come within this, uh, this area. So, Volatility can increase. We showed this chart last week. You can see the prior times, the intraday volatility can reach about 15 uh, on average on the scale leading into that halving cycle. So moving on, is the top in for Bitcoin? Very, very simply put, is the cycle top in? Because a lot of people are panicking that it's over, it's a left translated cycle and that's it, pack it up, come back in four years. If you use the Pi cycle top indicator, which uh, historically has marked not pricing wise pricing wise it doesn't nail the exact dollar top but timing wise it gets it very very close within the vicinity of the top and the way that this works is using the 111 and 350 day moving average and really you need to see the 111 day moving average cross above the 350 day moving average so that shows you that uh, there's an increase in recent buying and prices are essentially going parabolic so you'd look for something like this price to continue to rally up, this will very aggressively pull up the shorter term moving average, that being the 111. And as it crosses, as it tends to cross that 350 day moving average, usually wherever price is then timing wise, that would signify more or less that it's the top. And if you look at this um, set of data over here, you can see we're nowhere near that, right? Ultimately, uh, this 111 day moving average is still oscillating way, way, way below the 350. It's got a long way to go before it catches up. So maybe a local top is that a possibility that this is a local top and not a, a, a cycle top yes it could be a local top but a cycle top would mean that the bull run is completely over and we need to wait another four years for prices to come back uh, to these levels or higher so let's continue for now um, we still are following the parabolic trend right the invalidation of this parabolic trend would be if bitcoin starts to break below fifty thousand dollars and hold there uh, the line in the sand is really forty eight thousand dollars so give or take say fifty thousand closing candles below fifty thousand dollars would invalidate this parabolic move and then you could say well now maybe we're wrong on our day on our idea and uh, it is a major cycle top so there it is. This is the chart that we've been focused on. As long as we're above 59K, that is 
bullish uh, and you're above the high time frame trend indicator, which is your 21 exponential moving average. And this is just that chop consolidation that occurs around this region, creating an order block, right? Those order blocks have occurred throughout Bitcoin's history. If you look at the prior cycle, when we were attempting to get above the prior all-time highs, there was a lot of chop around that region, right? For quite some time. This created that consolidation on the order block, which creates the base and ultimately prices then gravitate up very quickly. Now notice if you look at what happened on the prior cycle over here, look at the volume profile. You wanna see a steady incline in that volume profile as price starts to move up into that breakout zone. And if we look at what's happening now, well, we had a big drop off in volume. So you wanna notice um, as price moves up over here, if price starts to gravitate up, um, I'll give you the lower time frame levels on the daily and the four hour time frame. but if it moves up into these overhead resistance areas, on low volume, that would be a signal that, well, maybe it's a bit of a warning sign that bulls are not going to gain back control. And in that instance, yes, this could be a major, major top, and we could be going a lot lower, um, as mentioned, possibly between that forty-eight and $50,000 region, which will be your next major support. This, vo this volume profile over here on the sell-off uh, was fairly large in comparison to last week over here. So pay attention to the next green volume profile, right? Um, but as for altcoins, where do these altcoins lie? Well, uh, Ritika says over here that every chart that he's opened is at or around weekly areas that you could have only dreamed of buying weeks ago. Here you have Dusk coming back into a strong area of horizontal support. You also have Ethereum coming back near a strong area of horizontal support. This one could have come lower. My target was uh, possibly around $2,200. Uh, you have Phantom coming perfectly into the uh, trend indicator over here as well, strong horizontal uh, support just above that 40 cents. And then of course Solana, which I opened a pretty sizable position on coming into that about $120 region. So I'm up significantly on the positions that I have opened. I uh, will continue to monitor this. I'm bullish on Rune for the long term. I told you guys that I was looking to eventually consolidate some of my positions into Rune, that being one of the bigger trades that I want to hold open uh, for the rest of the bull run. If we look over here at what's happening on Bitcoin on the five-day chart, you have closed now a five-day candle uh, below, of course, the moving averages, which have now also crossed. This again gives you that uh, support, that uh, confluent factor that you might come back to test this horizontal area, which lines up with the purple moving average, that being your high time frame one currently in the $52,000 region. So that is still a possibility, but you need to look at how it lines up with the other time frames. I'm about to get onto the other time frames right now. So uh, Bitcoin on the daily over here, you can see the RSI is fully reset to levels last seen when Bitcoin was at uh, $41,800 all the way back down to that 40 level. Um, let's see if bulls can reclaim control and bounce price. This is the level to clear. This is really, so to make it clear, super high time frame trend, weekly trend remains towards the upside. It's still bullish. Your daily trend is ranging and showing signs of possibly turning back down. Your uh, four hour time frame, we'll get into that in a moment. So this is your daily time frame, right? You can very clearly see the range, which we've also marked off on the four hour time frame. There's your range low, there's your range high. You're currently attempting to cross the mid range. Now the mid range also just so happens to line up. So there it is, let's just quickly mark it off. Uh, grab the 50% level, there it is. Let's mark that off nice and clear on your mid range. Here we have it. That is your mid range level. So we'll make that nice and big. Okay, that is your mid-range level for the current daily time frame on Bitcoin. That is also lining up with all the different pivot levels and exponential moving averages. Um, you can see this is going to be enormous resistance. Now you have to listen carefully over here because this is very, very, very important. Okay. Look at the massive amount of resistance that we're about to come into right now. So although it's exciting that um, you of course have Asia, which have approved both the Bitcoin and the Ethereum spot ETF, and unless that's met with major, major bullish sentiment in Asia where they start max bidding, uh, and sends price through this level, unless that happens, this is gonna be formidable resistance. And you always have to ask yourself when you lose a level, well, is that level going to be tested now again as resistance? Or is this a bull trap where you're going to reclaim that and continue on higher? So I'll have to um, uh, 
manage all of these trades that I'm currently in, which is again why I consolidated it into one trade, uh, which I'll show you why as well in a moment. It's always a good idea to consolidate trades in, uh, when when things start to shift into one trade that's easy to manage. Um, and I'll show you why. I'll show you why in a moment. This is going to be the level, right? You have the 9 and the 18 exponential moving average. You also have your pivot level there. You have your 200 EMA on the four hour time frame and you have your 200 EMA on the one hour time frame, all of which is a major, major area of confluence. So the prior level that we said needed to be cleared with multiple daily candle closes above the top side was $71,400. You can see price was unable to clear that level, level rejecting, 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 and that led to the sell off to the downside. We did theoretically sweep that range low, which was also something we were uh, looking for as a potential based off of this rejection. Now the, the level to clear was that. Now we can reduce that level. We can say, well, now the new level to clear would be, ye not yesterday, the day before, on Saturday's wick high. If we can start to break above Saturday's wick high, which is going to be at $69,100, so we can mark that off. Uh, let's just quickly label that. So $69,100 is the new level to clear. If bulls can get above that, close daily candles above that level, multiple daily candles, then you can say, well, this is probably a bull trap. I mean, uh, excuse me, a bear trap, meaning that bears think prices are going to go lower and consequently bulls regain control and send things higher. Until then, you have to say that this is resistance and it's probably going to reject price. So be careful as price moves into here. We only, as a percentage, how far away? This is currently sitting at about 1.9 to about 2% away. That is the level to clear. Okay. Now, we also spoke about last week the potential for a Wyckoff uh, distribution schematic on the four hour time frame. We're looking for an up thrust after distribution, which looks like this, where price tends to gravitate back up and clear the range high. You can look over here. We more followed schematic two, which ultimately shows that you have weakness beforehand and you fail to get that secondary up thrust. You have the up thrust happening in phase B of the distribution. So if we go to that four hour time frame, that would look something like this, right? This would have been phase B of that distribution. So we're looking for a secondary up thrust. We didn't get the secondary up thrust. We could still get the secondary up thrust, right? We need to wait to see. But the only way that we can confirm that is if we break above these levels. If you break above this mid range, which again is coming around that 69K level. If you do that, then watch, there is still a possibility of a sweep and a break back into the range. If you see that, once again, this is bearish, right? Imagine this would trap a lot more people that think that the bottom is in and we continue towards the top side, sweeping and coming back down. It could be that we didn't get that, right? And we're in schematic one, which means that the up thrust, off, uh, the up thrust at distribution occurred over here. You come down and now you're looking for rejection from this region, a break below. So if we break and, and hold below 61,500, then you know, high, high probability, you're going to distribute all the way back down to 52K. So again, just tying all of this in, this is a significant level. Coming in right here, right now, is a very significant level. Bulls need to take control. We can't see a rejection over here. If we get a rejection, we're probably going to break below 61K, which means $52,000 is next. So this is your four-hour time frame. Look at the EMA resistance over here. Look at the one-hour time frame. Again, where that 200 EMA lines up right at the mid-range level, which just so happens to coincide with everything that I've shown you over here. Super, super significant. I hope I made this clear. I know that, um, you know, when, when the trends begin to shift, there's a lot of different things going on. One part of it's bullish, the other part is neutral, the other part's bearish, right? Because the low timeframes move first. So low timeframes can flip bearish. Then only will the medium time frames flip bearish after that. And then the long time frames at the end, the high time frames flip bearish last. So I've spoken a whole bunch to a bunch of different people. And I hope I've made it clear. Let me know in the comments. Smash the like button as well, guys. We have more than 4,400 of you live. Please do me a massive, massive favor. Been working all weekend trying to put the show together for you guys to give you accurate data. Please, please help me out. Smash the like button um, and then let's continue on with the show. So let's keep going. Okay, now 
There is some free stuff coming up, of course. So we've covered the Bitcoin charts. We're going to go into altcoins, stock markets, meme coins, uh, the whole bank shoot. Uh, there is the airdrop coming up, right? Of course, we have the gummy airdrop coming up. It's just been announced. So for any of you who hold the Tuka token, which now Banta have partnered with them to create uh, a meme formed uh, media channel with news content that, that's providing alpha, but I guess in a comical fashion. Uh, if you're holding the Tuka token, which is here, he has Tuka, um, you will get the airdrop as well, right? I did confirm with Ran, it doesn't matter how much of the Tuka token you're holding. I asked him this morning on our meeting um, because I thought maybe if someone holds more Tuka than someone else, they'll get more of the airdrop. It's not going to be the case, right? So don't feel obligated to go and buy hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of Tuka. Um, you can just put in a dollar worth of Tuka and you'll qualify for the airdrop, the gummy airdrop as well, because it's on your Phantom Wallet, your Solana Phantom Wallet. Phantom PH, not Phantom the chain. Uh, and consequently, you also get that airdrop. Okay, this is what the Tuka chart looks like. A reminder, uh, congratulations to the Whale Room community who got in on this candle down here at an $800,000 market cap. You are up uh, about 75 to 80X on this position. A major, major congratulations. I would not be selling, right? Especially given all the new information that's come out with the whole news network and the partnership. I think it could be a really, really uh, solid long-term play. Which brings me to another point, something very, very interesting that I noticed over the course of the weekend with a lot of my meme coin positions. I woke up uh, when obviously everything was dumping, expecting that I'm gonna have lost a huge amount of money in the meme coins that I am currently holding. And I mean, it's, Pretty interesting, right? I speculate the reason that didn't happen, meme coins didn't dump that hard, at least the uh, the more degen ones that are not listed on uh, major exchanges and the coin geckos and coin market caps, but you simply have to just find them here on Dex tools. Now I speculate that it's because people are already putting in money that they're willing to lose. It's a complete gamble. They're putting in $10, $50, $100, maybe some people $1,000, which you know, if they have if they have a big trading account, a thousand dollars might be zero point zero one percent. So they weren't rushing to their laptops to quickly try and close their positions to save fifty dollars or twenty dollars. They just let it be, and consequently, there was hardly any drawdown in these meme coins. Like Tuka, there was hardly any drawdown in Tuka. Literally nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. It traded like a completely normal day. And when it's risk back on in the market, they got up significantly more. And this is part of what I was speaking about on Friday in the sense that there's this paradigm shift that's occurring within this meme coin sector. Um, and uh, we brought up the tweets and spoke about the, uh, you know, this new meme economy that's kind of coming up as its own entire new sector. Very, very interesting food for thought when you are establishing positions. If you're looking for higher risk plays as opposed to going 25 or 50x long on leverage, I think this is a safer opportunity, honestly, to look at things like meme coins, um, not shilling any of my bags. You can choose any meme coin you want, uh, create a, a balanced sort of portfolio. Uh, I, I just found it super interesting. Anyway, continuing on, uh, speaking of Tuka, so you hold Tuka, that's one way you get the gummy airdrop. The other way, sign up to Blowfin. I had a lot of questions around this, which is why I'm bringing it up. Something worth noting. You need to make a deposit uh, onto Blowfin in order to qualify for the airdrop. So we said about $100. And the reason for that is simple, right? We are not looking for, um, you know, affiliate commissions on exchanges and things like that. Remember, Blowfin is non-KYC, meaning you don't have to use your ID or passport or anything to prove that you're opening a Blowfin account, which means that people can theoretically go and open up 50 or 100 Blowfin accounts and deposit $1 into each to qualify for the airdrop, getting a huge amount of these gummy tokens uh, in a little bit of a cheat way, right? That is the reason why we said just deposit $100. We feel that fitting our audience, that matches um, at least a palatable amount that they can deposit. So they're only gonna do it once on one exchange. If they do it on more, um, I guess they're gonna have to put a lot of $100 down. But ultimately, that's what we're looking at, right? Uh, if you go through to the below section over here, the airdrop could happen at any um, at any moment. So go through to Gummy, it's launching on 420, the snapshot, uh, for the airdrop um, could happen at any moment. It is going to take place this week. 
Okay, it's gonna happen 100%. It's happening this week, way before the airdrop. So please use the link in the description below. Claim your sign-up bonus, deposit the $100. You can withdraw it after the airdrop if you want. Uh, and that's it. For the Whale Room community, we dropped the form in the announcement section on Whale Room. Please go through there and fill this out. You get extra bonuses for being part of Whale Room. Go through, complete the form over there, um, and then let's continue. Okay. This is all separate to your airdrop count over here, by the way. Okay, now I mentioned to you there's one big, big, major signal which I pay attention to uh, when it comes to bull markets and the shakeout periods. This is very, very critical and it has a, a super high hit rate for me personally when I trade it this way. So this is completely free alpha, guys. I've literally made life-changing money, literally life-changing money based on this alone. And it's this, right? It's the funding rates. Look at the weekly time frame over here and look at the history of as long as what we have using these funding rates. Now, this is not even talking about when you're in a confirmed bull run. This is even in a choppy market where we're still debatable. Are we in a bear market? Are we in a bull market? Are we just in a ranging market? Nobody really knows where we're at within the market. The funding rates go negative, okay? Funding rates go negative, aggregate funding goes negative. This was in the COVID dump over here. You can see they went extremely negative every single time. This is a super, super strong buy signal price rallies towards the upside. Here it goes negative a couple more times, price pushes up, negative once or twice more, and then it's up only, boom. Comes down, negative over here, leads to still a substantial bounce in the coming weeks. Now, this was almost the end of the bull run, right? Uh, that was a major, major crash that occurred. We had the double top scenario in 2021, continued to rally up and we came down. Again, we had another one, right? Big, big sell off. This led to a bounce from $40,000 all the way up to uh, $52,000. Very, very significant off that small bit of negative funding. And now this is in even in a bear market. What happens in a bull market? Well, the FTX negative funding over here, the collapse created negative funding, and that cre that signaled the, the end of the bear market and the very, very start of the bull run, right? As soon as that happened and as soon as price broke back into the trading range over here, this was the trading range, so as soon as that happened, negative funding, we had a few more days of negative funding, price broke back into the trading range, the bull market began and it was onwards and upwards. The USDCD peg was one of the biggest negative fundings that we had, which occurred over here. And look at what happened next. Okay, there's your price, right? That's what happened next. Now, if you go over here, we once again, I'll just move this up to clear that. We once again have just started to print negative funding. So the chances are that this will be a major buying opportunity, right? A major, major buying opportunity. Yes, we can reject from the high time frame levels which I've given you over here. That is a real possibility, right? We could come up here. You could see something like this. You could come up here, push in, reject, break below, head down to $52,000 and then set in the major bottom. Whilst at the same time, the negative funding drops all the way down here uh, which is much more substantial, right? We could see another week or two of negative funding, reclaim those levels, uh, and then ultimately continue on up, right? So you would, uh, on the high time frame, it would look like this. The big move would come down, extremely negative funding, spike back up, and then start to recover, right? Start to recover. You could see something like that. And then the bull runs back on. So pay attention to that. That is a real possibility. Uh, currently now, again, low time frame trends are still kind of to the downside in the sense that you have spot heading down, leverage heading down. We do have a full reset on the open interest, which is a pretty healthy sign. That's looking good. Um, we're looking for longs to open up over here. So hopefully the longs open up, um, spot increases with the ETFs, leverage increases, and then you can spike through these key levels. We really want to see a reclaim above $69,100. Uh, that will look really, really good. You have over here also cumulative volume delta negative over there. Longs to short 377 short liquidations versus 129 long liquidations. Um, and let's continue. Dollar. 
the DXY, which of course is the dollar measured against a basket of other currencies around the world, is very, very strong, right? We identified this is a range breakout. You broke out of the trading range. You came back down to test the range high as support, which you have done so. And you're in this rising parallel channel. This is a weekly time frame, very, very macro high time frame, bullish still on the dollar over here. Look at that massive spike, right? Big, big spike. But also understand that just because the dollar is rallying towards the upside and bullish does not mean that crypto cannot have a bull run. In 2017, uh, the dollar was running towards the upside. Look at look at 2021. Okay. Yeah, you have the 2021 bull run. Of course, big, big moves towards the upside. If you look at the, the dollar, 2014 all the way up here into 2017. That was one of the biggest bull runs that we've ever had. Uh, the dollar can go up and crypto can go up too. Okay, stock market, still holding at range lows. Very, very critical support. If you look at the NASDAQ, pre-market is showing that it's gonna open towards the upside with a pretty substantial move over here. That's a 0.54% uh, move towards the upside. Uh, let's see if it can continue. But for now, same thing as what we've previously mentioned, range bound. Dow Jones is the only one that's doing badly, losing its range levels, breaking below over there. This one might revisit down to 36,000 points. And then you have Coinbase also opening pre-market towards the upside. Very, very uh, negligible, small move, but nevertheless, it is gonna be opening towards the upside. So, okay, I am gonna be looking for some trade opportunities. We'll, we'll chart the altcoins in a bit. If I find something uh, noteworthy to take another trade on, uh, I'll possibly enter. Um, I have my... Uh, my Prime XBT account loaded over here, ready to take a trade. Uh, by the way, if you do want to trade also the DXY, the stock market, any of those things on Prime XBT, you can trade crypto stocks, commodities, forex pairs, gold, the whole bank shoot, right? Everything that you need, oil in times of uh, fear around wars, usually you want to be trading things like oil and gold. Those are the easiest trades. They're the quickest moving things in that type of environment. For those of you who do want to trade on Prime, there is a sign up bonus for you. Use the link in the description below. You're getting up to $7,000 if you use that link. Okay. We went through on Friday all the different altcoins, the ones that are weak versus Bitcoin and the ones that are strong versus Bitcoin. I opened a Solana position because Solana is one of the strong coins, right? So if the market is gonna bounce, Solana has been one that according to Renko has been putting in higher highs and higher lows. So we're looking for a little bit of a, a, a bounce over here on Solana against BTC. If it is gonna continue to maintain this uptrend of higher highs and higher lows, Solana should be looking to bounce. Okay, I'll need to remember which are the other ones that look strong. Um, I'll quickly go through. There was only like one in each category. Stacks was the other one to look at. Okay, Stacks was one that had been uh, rising against Bitcoin, so that wasn't too bad. We had, I think, OM, look at that. OM, real world assets, very, very strong. Even right now, big bullish move. We have Dusk, which I also showed you was coming into a key area of support. This one hasn't flipped the trend to the upside, but USD wise is looking pretty strong. Uh, let's continue on. What other ones did we have? Okay, I think that is it for the BTC pairs. All right, all right, that's it for the BTC pairs. Let's go into the rest of the show and then we'll get into your uh, your altcoin requests. Uh, Alex Kruger, so this is one reason why I said that I consolidated some of my positions, um, not because of his tweet, but because I agree with this and understand this, why I consolidated some of my other positions in times of arranging market into rather just one trade. Alex Kruger, market flushes are the perfect time to reallocate from poor performing assets, example ETH, uh, into high quality faster horses like Solana, Ton, uh, Worldcoin, Arweave, Tau. That is an opportunity, why? Because as the market goes down, right, if those have historically been strong and they get hit hard, let's say Ethereum goes down um, 10% and Solana went down 20%, that's an opportunity based on the next bounce for you to move out of Ethereum. So it goes up less, it goes down less, it's underperforming in an up market, but it's outperforming, it's, it's not going down as hard when the market is going down. So if you believe that the market is gonna, go, is gonna bounce and you're holding terrible positions, that's the opportunity to reallocate those. Sell out of your slow things, right? Like XRP, Cardano, ETH, I'm just naming random coins, right? Random coins that I think have been weak. Sell those into the strong ones that have liquidity, that have uh, market interest, because when the market bounces, they're gonna be the first ones to bounce back. And that's exactly what we saw, right? That's what we saw within the, within the run. Now, 
where are we within the market, right? Total three for the altcoins. We've been looking for a long time for a consolidation within this area. And we said it's probably going to go on for weeks, right? We need to form a strong order block, which will give enough momentum to break price out of this key level at $822 billion market cap. And if we see that, that's where the real altcoin season begins. And usually that only takes place after the Bitcoin halving has already completed. So if you look at the overall trend here, it is still towards the upside, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs. This could be a higher low over here. That trend is still in motion. Now, it's good that we closed above this level. This was the prior week's low. Um, of course, some altcoins got absolutely obliterated over here, but we still closed above that level. Now, watch to see, do we continue to gain acceptance above this $643 billion mark? If we do, there is still hope that this will just be a reaccumulation range and you can break above and continue on higher. All right, it's all gonna come down to what Bitcoin does. As I showed you on the one hour, four hour and daily time frame at that mid-range level, uh, around $69,000, can that be reclaimed or not? Okay, I'm quickly answering Todd, who's literally got a gummy profile picture. Will any wallet do Tuka uh, or gummy airdrop? You want to use a phantom wallet, guys. Type in on Google, P-H-A-N-T-O-M, Phantom. It's the purple one, like on the next to the, the sponsor that's over there. Uh, there we go, on that side. Okay, okay, I can't get, look at my cursor. Watch my cursor. There you go. This one over here. I'm not going to open it. I don't want to dox all of my wallet addresses. That little purple one, that's the one that you can use. It's just the easiest. There are other ones. You can't use an exchange one. Don't submit an exchange Solana address to us because that means the exchange is going to get the, the airdrop. You can give it to them, but you'll never see the airdrop. The airdrop's going to go to the exchange then. Uh, it's their wallet. So you need to give a DEX wallet, right? A, uh, a, a wallet that's uh, cold storage or something that you own, you hold the private keys to. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so if you look over here, in terms of top performers, talking about relative strength uh, around the altcoins, uh, Woof is the top performer after yesterday's flush. Again, followed by a bunch of different AI coins. So uh, you got WorldCoin, AGIX, Tau, Render, Arbitrum, Beam, Floki, Lido, and Fetch AI. So this shows you for the coming weeks, if prices were to bounce and following the the um, the halving cycle where prices usually rally a couple of weeks after that halving cycle, these are probably going to be the top performing coins that are going to continue to run. So you want to mark these off. You want to look for places to enter into these coins if you're not already holding positions in these. That's one way that you can do it. Every time there is a major, major dump, you can take, for example, an easy way is banter bubbles. And you can literally just look, you can look on, you can even go as low in the moment of the dump, right? And you're sitting and you're watching, look at the five minute time frame. Then scroll through the top 100, see what's happening in 101 to 200. Look in the 201 to 300 market cap coins. And this is how you can spot the biggest bubbles will usually be the strong coins that are gonna bounce out of there first and have relative strength for the rest of the move. Okay, cool. Now that we've covered that, let's go into some of the charts over here. So we have Solana. This is another reason I took Solana. I mean, it was a pretty obvious trade for me over here. You're coming into a key area of horizontal support. I've told you I have a priority list uh, uh, in terms of an area of interest. We have first is horizontal. Second would be high time frame moving averages. Third would then be, I'll look at things like diagonals. So it's confluent, right? You have double confluence with the horizontal plus the rising uh, trend line over here, which has been governing the overall uptrend. And then let's see, do I have any moving averages on here? Let's quickly just see how do the moving averages line up? So we have, what do I have on over here? Okay, we have the, let's just see in relation to the 200, perfect. 200 is a very, very significant moving average on the daily time frame, And there's Solana coming into the 200, holding it as support over there. It did wick through it, but didn't close anything below. That could have been a very, very strong buying opportunity. Now to confirm the bullish momentum over here, you would need to see it break and hold above, at which point you can call all of this a big bear trap. If it rejects from here, then ultimately you're probably coming down one more time. I'll give it another chance to reclaim. And if it rejects again, so if you see something like that, rejects again, well, ultimately we're gonna have a different picture in the crypto market in general. Bitcoin probably would have rejected from 69K. ETH will probably be down to around $2,000 and that's gonna shift everything. But 
as well, I've mentioned before that your first test of a high time frame moving average, <clears throat> let's change the color over here. Let's make it blue just so you can see it nicely. Your first test of a high time frame moving average in a bull trend is usually a strong bounce zone. And there you can see, has it been touched? No, 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 yes. Pro pro probability was very, very high that this was going to elicit at the very least a reaction uh, to set in a lower high. Very least, you're going to get a lower high over here. Either way, I knew it was going to be a bounce. When you're trading with big amounts of money, easy money, right? Put in a big position over there and we get the bounce up. Probably going to have made a couple of hundred thousand dollars off of that trade. All right. ETH BTC, very, very important. Um, let's see, strong downtrend uh, distribution. It could be reaccumulation on the high time frames, but for now, we've lost a very, very key level on ETH BTC. You really need to see it break and get above here, above the white line, 0 0.05. Breaking above the white line doesn't confirm everything is bullish. It simply just means that you're breaking back into this trading range. Really, you need to see this get above 0 0.055, which is over here. So again, let's just clear it up. You need to see it get above here to fully confirm that, okay, uh, the accumulation is well on its way to expansion towards the upside and we're continuing. Okay, so watch that level. Here is your ETH USD chart creating new swing lows. Uh, your resistance level on ETH. Okay, let's give you your resistance level on ETH. Just quickly mark this off. Okay, you're coming into underside resistance right now at current levels. The big level to reclaim uh, is the yellow zone, 3,550 for ETH. That's the zone to get above. Um, I would expect that it's probably going to rally into that area. And then you need to see, is it going to reject? If it rejects, good chance you're coming down to uh, the $2,200 region, right? Again, at that point, Bitcoin probably rejected 69K. Okay, we got a big spike up in the Bitcoin dominance over the course of the weekend, heading into the top side of the upsloping trend line over there, uh, which has been a rising wedge formation, but we've covered this a whole lot, right? Again, in the order of importance or priority list, horizontals are most important, high time frame moving averages are next, then we can only look at diagonals as support levels uh, and then patterns, right? So this being a bearish pattern in the priority list is the lowest priority. We don't care. The most important thing is that we focus on the horizontals, the high time frame moving averages. And for right now, everything is very, very bullish for Bitcoin dominance, despite the rising wedge pattern, which is a bearish pattern. Why? Because the other priorities are first and we're above those levels, right? We're now above the mid range meaning this mid-range is probably going to be support and you might see a move all the way up to $60,000, at which point this is the order block that led to the breakdown. That was a long-term target of mine for Bitcoin dominance. Um, and that's probably where I would sell out of my Bitcoin into altcoins. Uh, my original Bitcoin bag from $17,100, I'm still holding every single one. I haven't sold a single token. This would be the first area where I would consider doing that uh, Without a without a break of trend, right? The the if we break the trend down, then of course I'll consider it over there. The first time I consider it within the strong uptrend for Bitcoin dominance is when we hit this level. Okay, okay, moving on. We came into an area of interest for chappies. You guys will remember I said to you back over here, we buyers of chappies, which is a very low market cap, right? Um, so of course that gives you high upside potential when it's a low market cap you only need a few million to come in and ultimately you'll get multiple extra turns on this coin uh, it came into this zone okay right this was our strong horizontal exactly i haven't changed a single thing on this chart we tagged it to the t that was a buy zone i added some to my position so what on earth is this coin remember we playing the social fi game. Eventually, when we start to move into that, uh, this is social engagement. You can buy the token, you can stake it. If you go through to their website over here, um, they, they, you get rewarded for interacting with different communities, right? So um, go check it out. There's a link in the description below. They also happen to be one of our sponsors. Um, fantastic website over here. You can interact with these different campaigns that are occurring right now. You get rewarded for doing that, stake the token, um, and that's it. That's it. Okay, what else? What else do we have? Let's look at some of these meme coins over here. Um, okay, Pepe coin. 
This was one of interest, but we have created a new swing low. So big move over here. I'm expecting a range to form on Pepe coin. This is the OG original Pepe coin. Remember we spoke about this. We said that uh, the other Pepe coin that most people know is not the original Pepe coin. This one was created in 2016 and it has ties to um, the, the AI, right? Uh, if you go to based AI, there's a relationship between them and based AI. So we hit the range low over there. Uh, we're coming into mid range. This is the level to clear at about 589. Okay, uh, let's go to based AI. Okay, based AI, there we go. Also, oh man, I missed it. I missed it. I can't believe it. Remember I said to you guys, this is where I was looking to allocate into based AI exactly on that trend line, which lined up with the horizontal. I didn't look at this chart over the course of the weekend, but you can see the TA works, right? Coming into that zone, breaking back into the range. Um, long term, I think this one's looking super, super good. What else have we got? Um, how's DJ doing? How did DJ hold up on the dip? Okay, it looks like it's it's a bit of a low market cap, so probably lost some levels. There we go. Yep. Okay, lost the range low over there. Let's just redraw some of this. Okay, lost the range low, looking to reclaim into this area. Failure to get back above the mid-range of that range, which is going to be 0.04 cents. So I'll mark it off. 0.04 cents. Look at how it lines up with this uh, these candles over here. And I'll show you why it's significant. Failure to get above that would be a rejection from the old mid-range, but it would also result in a lower high. And then this is probably going to be coming low. So very, very significant level. If you are in the DGEN token, which I am, uh, this is one area that you want to watch. Okay, what else? What have we got in the chat? Okay, Larry Pink of BlackRock. I see you guys are asking that. Um, let's see how it is. Okay, BlackRock, how's BlackRock holding up? Okay, still holding the range levels, which is good. Perfect, still holding the range levels. This is creating a very, very long-term base of uh, solid holders. The community still seem ripe and vibrant, and I still have my BlackRock Larry Pink bags. Um, so we wanna see that level get defended, right? And then eventually we need to break and hold above the top side of the range, that being 0 0.08729, uh, and then you can start to target up towards some of these zones. And if you want, uh, you know, full exit velocity for this coin, you need to take out the prior highs. That will give a lot of confidence to the market. Taking out those prior highs will be very, very significant. Uh, most of the meme coins that fail to do that just end up um, trending to zero, right? The ones that take out their prior highs are usually deemed very, very strong within the market and there is continuation. Okay, what else? What do we have? Okay, I'm checking out your uh, requests over there, guys. Let me let me grab the our normal charts. Here we have it. Okay, let's see injective quickly. How's injective doing? Also broke below the range level. So a lot of these coins, you want to see a reclaim of the range now. Remember, chart patterns are not the primary source of truth. We don't. We we just look at them uh, to potentially map out our chess game, right? If we think of crypto trading as chess and thinking ahead, this is kind of like considering, you know, different moves on the chessboard. Like I'm gonna execute uh, this move or I'm gonna execute that move. You come with a strategy and a plan. Now, if you look at this, there is a possibility for a power of three. What is a power of three? Remember, you have the accumulation, which occurred in this area over here. Then you get manipulation to the downside. This could be the manipulation move. And then you get uh, distribution, right? Let's just quickly, I got the wrong one. Let's grab that again. And then you get distribution towards the upside or expansion. If it's if it distribution, if it's to the downside or expansion. So accumulation, this could be a manipulated move. What that means, okay, we're just mapping it out like chess players planning our next moves. If we can break and get back into the range over here at $28 and hold that level, now we can say, okay, cool. This looks good for a move, at least up until the prior range high. So that's the first part of the move. We're happy, okay? It's going to range high. If it gets to 44 and breaks and holds above, now we can say, we can use our FIB extension targets, and now we're happy to potentially move 
all the way to the top side for full expansion, uh, at which point you can confirm that this was a power of three and works to the downside as well, right? Uh, but in this instance, since we're in uptrend, we're focusing on this to more be a deviation and break back in and then expansion up. All right, now that we got that cleared, let's continue. Okay, AVAX, how's AVAX doing? Okay, also lost a key level, very, very significant level. AVAX must reclaim $50. It's lost the 200 uh, MA as well on the daily time frame, which is significant. What about NIA? Okay, wicked into the 200 MA leading to a bounce. That was also the prior range high. So that one is bouncing, phantom. Same thing, hitting the 200 MA, also the prior range high. That was a good buy zone in my opinion, atom. Okay, not looking good. This is playing out according to what we said. Already hit the level. I just expected it to happen uh, uh, later on and not so quick. But nevertheless, that played out. Casper, how's Casper doing? Okay, significant because it's losing the 200 MA. It needs to recapture that very, very quickly. Um, if it does recapture it and lose it again, well, ultimately, this is showing you that you're going to have a prolonged chop. Doesn't mean that it's all over for Casper, it just means you're gonna have a prolonged chop and the 200 MA is gonna to start to flatten out, uh, allowing for reaccumulation. Elephium, okay, also still looking pretty decent. One of the big movers over here, approaching the mid range though. Uh, let's see, what else? What else? Scroll through our list over here. Let's quickly look at the real world assets, which were historically very, very strong. How are they doing? Okay, reclaiming back into the range low. So that level must hold now. Current level $2 for uh, Rio must hold. C pool, there we go, hitting the range low. I did drop a live trade on this in a Discord. Go have a look in Discord for those of you that are there. The trade has been dropped in there as well. Okay, Dusk. Okay, also hitting the 200 MA over here. You're looking for a break up and hold above the, the breakdown level. You need to get above 45 cents, hold that level, and that will be looking good. OM, which has been one of the strong ones, beautiful, so much strength. Um, I'm really bullish on this. I'm still holding my positions over there. This is similar to you know the likes of Solana and Ton, which have been showing relative strength. OM, higher highs, higher lows, despite all of this, the trend is just um, continuing towards the upside and it's looking good. Okay, let's see Uniswap given everything that's happened over there. Okay, losing the 200, losing the 200, hitting the mid range over there. Uh, this is a key level. There we have it, key level, technically strong area of support, right? But now you need to be on lower high watch for something like um, for, for Uni. Be on lower high watch. Watch for the rejection over here from the prior range high. If you get it, literally it might come all the way back down. Guys, this is one reason I'm honestly reluctant to trade old coins, right? You know, old coins, yes, you, you, the one good thing is from a TA perspective, you know what you're working with, right? You know where the levels are, you know all of that. But when you deal with new coins that are kind of just moving into price discovery, it's just so much easier. Straight uptrends, onwards and upwards, high highs, high lows, um, it's, it's a much easier game to play uh, because there's no previous people in pain and underwater looking to get out of their positions. Everybody's in the money making profits and therefore they're more willing to put new money in. You have to manage your risk, of, co of course, and manage it accordingly. But nevertheless, that is how it works. Let's see quickly some of the meme coins. I'm just going to go through quick. Okay, we hit the level. There it is. We we're also showing this as the next possible move for Walsh. That is probably a buying opportunity. If you don't have Walsh and you had FOMO up here, now's your chance. Pepe. Okay, this is the fake Pepe. Nevertheless, there it is, playing out according to our LARP lines. Hits the 200 MA, leading to a bounce. Can it reclaim into the range low? That's the question. Bonk. Okay, losing the 200. Floki. Hitting the 200, bouncing off that 200 as support. Dogecoin almost tagged the 200 but failed. Also an old coin, right? Huge market cap it requires a lot of money to get this thing going. So therefore, I'm still more inclined to trade new coins. Okay, new coins, right? Like I gave you over here. Things like Chappies, just as a random example, something with $11 million market cap. If you put in another $11 million market cap, you have a 100% move. You've just doubled uh, your position over there. All right, where's our chart? Where's our chart? Here we have it. 
Okay, Sheb also hitting the 200. Croc losing the 200, but pretty new. How's Wiff doing? Okay, I mean, that's quite a brutal move over here. Chart-wise, it's looking sloppy. When? Hitting the range low. Okay, buy the dip zone, buy the dip. Much lower market cap than Wiff uh, is when, the cat. Wojak also hitting the 200. Gaming, let's quickly look, just get a quick overview of gaming. Gaming has really been nowhere. Look at that coming into support. Gaming and metaverse has been nowhere. Coming back all the way into the range low support for mana. Sloppy, range lows. Also, range low support. There we go, for sandbox. Alluvium. All the way back down. Rejection from the resistance area at the top. Super, one with relative strength. Hit the range level. Clean take over there. Reclaims the 200 uh, MA out of the gaming metaverse NFT space. Super has been one of the top performers looking good. Okay, Vulcan Forge not looking too great. Lost that level, must reclaim $5.50. Cedify starting to roll over from here, but um, probably just a consolidation, right? Range low coming in uh, for the current range, $2.60, um, and your range high needs to get back above $4.50. Gala, bouncing off the 200 MA, probably good for a move at least uh, just above here at 50 cents. And then that's the question, does it hold it or not? Naka, okay, not much to say over there. AXS. Not much. Okay, ape, long term, long. We already took a lot of profits up here. Um, half profits taken, the other half stopped out over there. So that trade is over. That trade's over. Okay, let's close that up. I think ape, I'm still bullish on for the very long term, all the way back down to range lows. Hey, back down to range lows. Okay, blur, games for a living, US. Okay, range low. There we go. Coming into the range low over here. We played this move from the bottom all the way back to the top. I would actually be looking for another opportunity over here on Ultra. It's not listed on that many exchanges though. Okay, Rune, let's see. Hopefully Rune bounces over here. It has lost the 200, so I'm looking for a big move. This is gonna be an interesting area over here at 620. I'll have to reevaluate uh, if I wanna get in, but that was the prior range high. We hit the mid-range, reclaimed the mid-range. Um, as long as it's above the mid-range, the long remains safe. Uh, we entered all the way on the bottom over here in this wick. Okay, what else, what else? Let me know in the comments, guys, what else? Bloodbath. I don't know. Is it a bloodbath? Let me go back here to Bubbles. How's Bubbles looking? Still fine. Bubbles is still looking fine. All right, guys, a reminder, use the time while you can to uh, get as much gummy airdrop tokens as you possibly can. Sign up using the links in the description below. That will get you allocation and, it's, and Blowfin is going to be the first place to list it. So I'll see you guys. Maybe not tomorrow. Maybe not tomorrow. I'm going to be flying to Dubai. I'll try my best. If not tomorrow, definitely on Wednesday. Have a great day and cheers for now, guys.